Hi everyone, today I'm doing an unboxing video from Royal Precision Lubricants. Um, they delivered me some oil to CV Bearings and today we're going to be opening the box to see what they have given us. So as I'm opening the box, um, we, we knew that there was going to be some oil in there for my Formula V uh, for the gearbox and the engine. So here we can see the titanium racing oil 5W30 which is what we use in the Volkswagen. And we've also got our gearbox oil here which as we can see uh, Royal, their yeah, racing titanium oh, brand is really great for the car. We and also truck. got beanies, uh, a little stress Please truck, um, and then we got some awesome hats. These are the new hats, uh, so we're pretty lucky to have them. And then you can also see at the bottom there's some pens, so it's really cool, and we really appreciate your help, Royal. And you know, thanks for delivering it to CV Bearings, who are also our other sponsors. And yeah, thank you guys so What's much, up, and down. enjoy the rest of the Grassroots Race episode. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Grass at Chaser. On this week's show, I'm excited to speak to another driver and co-creator of an annual magazine called iDrive. She currently races in the BMW E30 class. So to find out more, I welcome Jess Bell. How are you, how are you today, Jess? Good, thanks. Thanks for having me. It's nice to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, I, haven't had, I haven't interviewed an E30 driver for a little while. So it's great that you want to share your motorsport journey. Uh, but where did it all start for you? Uh, for me, it started uh, with dad, dad and my brother's racing. So dad was one of the creators of E30 Racing. Um, and then, you know, I was geez, six or seven, I think, when E30 Racing kicked off. And then for me, it was, you know, hanging around at the track, spending time with dad. I got busy by taking photos of cars and then when I was able to drive, Dad put me in an E30 and I guess the rest is history. Yeah, it's very cool. So, you know, did you think that one day you'd grow up racing, you know, BMWs because you were so involved around them? I think, I think that was always in the back of my mind. Like it was kind of a follow in Dad's footsteps. My brothers did it too. So it was maybe, maybe, maybe not much choice there involved, but um, I'm certainly not complaining. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and do you have a favourite track currently that you like the best? Uh, my favourite, uh, I mean, I have to say Winton is a pretty good track. I really enjoy going there. I like I like its technicality. Um, Phillip Island's always fun, as you know, mm. sweeping corners, high speed. I mean, you can't really go wrong at Phillip Island. <laughs> yeah, uh, Winton is a very technical track, um, very hard to get right in some categories. Uh I heard, though, the BMWs um, are quite all right at that track because of their handling. Um, do you normally go real, uh, Sorry, do you normally go well around Winton? Yeah, I do pretty well at Winton. I haven't raced there since last year. I missed out on our round. We only have one round there this year, which I missed out on. Um, but, yeah, I usually usually do okay. I've been getting my times down a bit there too. I've spent a little bit of time there testing. So, yeah, I really enjoy racing there. Yeah, it's definitely a, a great track. Um, but have you always raced the same car or have you had a few different ones? Yeah, I've always raced the E30. So my E30 is actually out of action at the moment because I crashed it last year. So I've been I've raced lots of different E30s but never ventured outside the E30. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what happened if you're comfortable? Yeah, of course. So I uh, round one the start of last year at Sandown. Turn one uh, just went in a little bit too hot. Uh, step the back stepped out a little bit and slid over the ripple strip, which then made me roll three three times. I think it was. Jeez, yeah, big crash. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. It was. I mean, we're pretty lucky with the safety of our cars these days. Mm -hmm. I was able to walk away. Really, no, no big issues. So that's always good. Um, and when are you planning on getting back into the car? My car, uh, I hopefully have that back next year. Um, we're actually starting working on it tomorrow to hopefully replace the roof on it and get that actual car back on track. Um, but for me, I'll be doing the last round of E30s in one of my brother's cars uh, in December. Yeah, that's really cool as well. But what what do you like about BMWs? Obviously, you grew up around them, but is there something that you really like about them? It's funny because it's it's kind of all I've known, but I do I do really love the handling of a BMW. I feel like that's something that you don't get. I mean, obviously, lots of other cars do handle really well, but I feel like with BMWs, they've always got a really great handling. You you can feel everything through the steering, which I really love about certainly the E30s. Yeah, um, you know, 
it's a bit different, but my dad does have a, a BMW as his daily driver. Um, and I've driven it around a few times and it's not, it's not a bad car, but you know, I'd like <laughs> to, I'd like to jump in an E30 one day and, you know, see how I'd go in it. Um, but you know, would you say it's a good category to start out in if you haven't done any racing before? Yeah, definitely. We've actually got quite a few newcomers to the series this year. Uh, and I know that there's quite a few coming in next year as well. It's definitely a really good category for that. You know, we have really great support network amongst all the drivers too, which is really cool. Um, and then in terms of, you know, le- they're a great car to learn in. They're, they're fast, but they're not, you know, they're not like crazy fast, yeah. like Trans Am fast or something like that. So they're, they're a good, I think they're a really good grassroots, grassroots learning car. Yeah. And have you ventured outside of Victoria yet? Because I know you've raced the, uh, the, you know, the big three tracks, um, Phillip Island, Sandown, Winton. Have you raced anywhere outside of Vic? Yeah, my first ever race meeting was actually at Wakefield. Well, obviously we won't be going back there. Mm. I've driven at Sydney. I've done a couple. I've done a sprint day there. Uh, haven't had a chance to race there yet, um, and haven't quite had a chance to get to any other any of the other tracks yet. Do you have any plans on going up to Bathurst? Because I know. Um, you can probably run the 30 in a class like the six hour. Yeah, um, definitely. It's something that we've talked about because a few of the E30 guys have done have done support categories, I think, at the six hour. And I know my dad's been up there before the six hour was Easter. They had festival of sporting cars there, which we went to a couple of years in a row. It's definitely on the radar. And I know that there's definitely talks about getting the category up there for a Bathurst round. And so if the category is there, I'll absolutely be there to join them. Yeah, it'd be cool to see the E30s uh, running around there. But do you do much of the work on your car yourself? I try to do as much as I can. Um, I'm pretty lucky, obviously, Dad being a mechanic and being right in everything, I can get a lot of help when I need it. But I always try and be there whenever Dad's working on the car to make sure I'm there because I like to learn things and try and do as much as I can do uh, helping him without the car. You know, it's usually it's usually a case of, you know, the, the car doesn't get touched unless I'm there, which which is really good because it gives me an opportunity to learn how to do all the different things as well. Yeah, and when you said that, um, you know, you had that crash at Sandown, did you, you know, is there much work that has to be done to the car? Because you said that you're going to be changing the roof on it, um, but was there much damage otherwise? Yeah, we've had it. I mean, we haven't had a close inspection of it yet. I think that's where we'll start off tomorrow with it. But it seems to be fairly straight still. It rolls straight still. I had a bit of a bit of damage to my engine on the sump, which was cracked. Um, the I think we need a new bonnet. We need a new front bar. One of the front guards. I think a new door on the driver's side door, um, and possibly one of the rear quarters. So. You know, nearly half a car. <laughs> yeah. Still, yeah, still a little bit of work to do, but, you know, hopefully you guys can, you know, quickly get it all fixed and, you know, be back out next year. Yeah, hopefully. Um, but how do you prepare for a weekend? What sort of things do you do to make sure that you're organised? Um, for me, I think it starts with going down to Dad's, um, going down to the factory, make sure the car's all organised and ready to go. Um, and then for me, it's just you know, I'm very big on organisation, so I make sure my paperwork and everything's ready to go, my suit's ready to go, all my race gear and everything is ready. Um, yeah, just trying to, I, I'm very much a tick box person, so I kind of I have a little list and I go through my list and check everything off to make sure I'm ready for a weekend. Yeah, that's uh, it's a very important thing, you know, to make sure you're organised for a weekend. Um, normally mum mum helps me out a lot uh, with all the paperwork <laughs> and stuff. Um, you know, so while me and dad try to do our last minute stuff to the car before we head off for the weekend. Um, yeah, that's but, very handy. <laughs> that's yeah. what mums are good for. <laughs> Is there anyone in motorsport that you look up to um, that inspires you to be a better driver? Um, I can't go past my brothers and my dad. For me, motorsport has always been a family thing and you know they've all got their names on our championship trophy and for me the goal is to follow in their footsteps and do the same so you know it's it's not reaching too far beyond our own category or my own family but for me it's always been about the family stuff so you know I just want to be as good as they are I want to get my name on the on that trophy and you know that's the goal for me so I, I you know kind of look up to them and the advice and stuff that they give me yeah um, and what does your brother cu- currently race? 
So both my brothers are not racing at oh, all yeah. at the moment. Um, one of them, he'll tell you he's not racing because I've got his car. <laughs> and the other, he's uh, he's quite busy with work. He's a, a race engineer on a Trans Am, so travels around quite a lot with the Trans Am, but hopefully he'll be back with us later this year in, in one of the 30s again. What team he works for? Yeah, so he works on the All-American Driveline uh, yeah. Trans Am, Benny Grice. Yeah, we, uh, we interviewed Benny Grice. I think two weeks ago um oh, and yeah. He, yeah, nice. he, he sent us some merch so yeah that was really cool yeah really cool you know do you think you would ever try a different category or just stick to the beamers yeah i'd definitely try something else i've always i've always loved you know um touring cars sports cars things like that porsches you know you can't can't go pa- past the porsches and things like that so you know, if the opportunity ever presented itself, I'd absolutely have a go. I had a chat to um, uh, a few people about jumping in an XL as well, maybe at the Enduro late, late was it next month, I think it is, but probably won't make it to that. But definitely the eyes are open and hopefully something will present itself. Yeah, it'd be, um, it'd be a cool experience for you because, you know, you do race the E30s and they look like a great category, um, you know, like I said. So it'd be really cool to jump into something else but you know i think excels wouldn't be too much different except for all the you know bumper to bumper stuff um, <laughs> yeah, they're probably a little bit more crazier than we are yeah. <laughs> but do you have any goals that you you know would like to achieve in motorsport yeah i think like i said before just the for me it's all it's it's all about i'd love to just win that championship and you know i i love the family vibe and the atmosphere that we get and just you know, the fun that we get going racing as a family, I think that sort of fulfills me quite a lot. Um, you know, if I could ever jump in something faster, cooler, absolutely would. Um, but I'm really happy, hopefully, just work to get my name on that championship trophy. There's a few guys that are pretty quick, so I need to do a bit of work to to top them. <laughs> yeah, um, the E30 category is definitely a competitive category and, you know, what do you think your chances are, you know, next year being back in your car, um, not your brother's car? Um, <laughs> do you think that you, you're in with a good shot? Yeah, absolutely. All going well. I've had some really good results this year, although I haven't done all of the rounds. My car is quick and I've been quick. I think it's just a case of being consistent, getting out there for all of the rounds and having a good crack. I think I could definitely be up there next year, but I think it will also depend on what my car's like once it's actually back in one piece and, hopefully still running straight still feeling good like it did before and making sure my engine's all right and you know all the other things that go along with with crashing a car and putting it back together i'm sure we'll find plenty of things that we'll need to fix along the way (laughs) um you know i'm gonna have that same issue um when i i had a crash in my car my formula v so uh you know yeah we haven't really started the rebuild on it but um you know we're slowly going to get it rebuilt and yeah we'll definitely find issues Will you be back out there next year? Yes, definitely, yeah. Awesome. We, we, You know, we were going to try and run it for the last round of the championship, but it's looking a bit unlikely um, just because uh, of parts. Like We always want to have spare parts there um, because, you know, it can go wrong very quickly. So, yeah. you know, if we don't really have the spare parts, we don't want to go and risk it. So that's yeah, where, yeah, that's where we're at for the minute. Um yeah, I also mentioned in the introduction um, that, you know, you've helped develop a, an annual magazine called iDrive. Can you tell me how that came about? Yeah, so uh, BMW Drivers Club Melbourne formed, I think it was about 2018, and, and I had a good friend at the time who uh, who was doing all my ph- ph- sorry photography for a previous magazine that I was working on, and we sat down for lunch one day and we just thought, what can we do? How can we do? Because we really enjoyed producing a magazine and we weren't doing that one anymore. And we thought, what can we do that would be different? You know, magazines these days are not not super common. Uh, So we came up with this idea that we wanted to do this annual, annual magazine that was just all about the car club, all about BMWs and what members get up to throughout the year, what events we get up to throughout the year. And we took it to the committee and yeah, kind of, kind of all went from there, and off we went. And we came out. I think we had a hundred-page publication at the end of it, which was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's really cool that you were able to get involved with that. Um, you know, it even just goes to show the smallest ideas can turn something, you know, awesome 
Is there anywhere people can purchase a copy? Uh, they, I think they have copies available on the BMW Drivers Club Melbourne website, which is bmwdcm.com.au. Yeah, and back to, you know, sort of on the track, as you would know, the ratio of men and women is a bit sided in motorsports. So, you know, what would you say to any women out there who have thought about giving it a go but don't know how to quite start? Um, good question. I think, you know, a lot of, a lot of it is just being able to take that step and, and find, you know, find, find a place, whether it's, you know, um, absolutely join a car club, whether it be, it, whether it be the car that you drive or a different, if, or even a different car club, if it's a car club of a type of car that you really enjoy. Like we had, we recently had a member join BMW Drivers Club who, she owned a Camry and she's now recently bought an E30 and wants to go racing with it in the future. Um, you know, start there, join, join a car club, get to know people, do some driver training days or, or some come and try days, do some sprint days and kind of work your way up and just, it's, it's good to start small and then work your way up, get confident, get comfortable, and then hopefully come join us on the racetrack. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's great having, um, you know, more women getting involved in motorsport. And I guess, I've, you know, I've been lucky growing up in a time where there's been, you know, a lot more women getting out on track. Um, you know, and I just hope by bringing awareness, you know, through people like yourself, you know, we can see a higher participation rate in the future. But, you know, do you have any sponsors that you would like to thank, you know, who have helped you in racing? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I should probably start with um, thanking the series sponsors that we have uh, for E30 Racing. So Garagistic, Liquid Molly, BMW Drivers Club Melbourne are also a sponsor. Um, budget, um, my own sponsors, of course, um, Bell Motorsport. I couldn't, certainly couldn't do it without out my team at Bell Motorsport. Um, you know, it extends well beyond our family too. We've got loads of guys that come come and help us. You know, um, any one person that you would like to thank as well? Uh, definitely my brother Chris. Uh, well, my brother Chris because he's he keeps me going when I'm on the racetrack. He's always the guy on the on the um, radio to me, keeping me calm, keeping me going. Uh, my dad Graham, you know, he he gets my car ready for me, well with me, I should say. Um, you know, he he's the reason why why I get to do what what we get to do. It's awesome, and of course, I can't go past my brother Sean because at the end of the day, it's his car that I get to drive in the absence of driving mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and do you have any social media pages where people can follow your progress yeah absolutely so we've got um on facebook we've got bell motorsport so if you just search bell motorsport you'll find us there um then i've got my own instagram which is just uh miss jess bell you can find me there and see what see what motorsport we're getting up to and um if if there's any females out there that want to want to have a go feel free to reach out to me anytime yeah i know we have a um, you know a few females who do watch the show and they are very into their racing um you know i've interviewed people in the past who you know they just love their racing um so you know it's been great that you've been able to speak to me today jess um it's been great hearing about you know how you got involved in motorsport and your passion for bmws i wish you all the best for the rest of the year and uh you know i hope you can get your car back on the road next year and you know keep publishing more copies of iDrive magazine um, and it's awesome how you've turned a small idea into, you know, something to be really proud of. So remember, everyone, if you are racing this weekend, drive fast and take chances safely, of course. And remember to like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Jess.